helps too. You know, talk to somebody who fishes a lot and they'll say, well, I go here and do this and this and this. And then you can take what you do and you can adjust it. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of learning. I mean, say right now you were uh, wanted to go learn to catch steelhead. Okay, you can either go down to the creek and talk to some of the guys. Some of the guys will feed you a line of crap. I mean, you know, it's fishing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, some of the guys will show you what they're doing and take pride in saying, this is the way I fish and uh -huh. whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you look over the different ways. And you say to yourself, well, like fly fishing. You know, I watch you guys fly fishing. It's, it looks great. But to me, it's like, well, you know what? It looks too much like work. You know, I take a noodle rod, which is a long long flimsy pole and I uh, flip out a jig underneath a float and that's the way I like to fish them. It's easy as hell. So, you this know, we're a fly a, fisher, you know. Yeah, you, that you bamboo gotta, pole you got to flip up and down. Up well, down. now they're graphite right, and everything right, else. Right, bamboo glass, is pretty yeah. much, you know. That, those are the old ones, the antiques. Yeah. Worth a lot of money. I got a couple of that. We got a caller. Good morning, caller. Hello. I can't hear you. Hello, Russ. There you go. You're on. Are you hearing me this time? Uh, we're, yeah, we're here, yeah, well, yeah. I hear when, you. When I came to this... Hello? Hello, yes? Yeah, we hear you. You're on television. Can you hear me? Yes. You're on television uh, now. When I was in England, we, we did a lot of sea fishing, uh -huh. night lines. Uh -huh. But when I came here, they talked about musky fishing. What, what's musky fishing? I haven't heard of it. I went out on Lake Erie once and caught some uh, salmon and trout and walleye. Uh -huh. But what's this musky? Uh, musky is basically a, a pike, which is a toothy critter that if you stick your finger in its mouth, it's going to nail you. But uh, I've never fished them a lot, but generally it's trolling up here on Chautauqua Lake using a large stick bait or... Some, I've talked to some guys that will use a large uh, bobber and put a crick chub on it and catches them that way. But they're basically, well, one time Chautauqua Lake was the musky capital of the world. I mean, they're basically a sport fish more than a, a food fish. So basically that's what you'd have to do. You'd have to come up here to Chautauqua. Uh, generally spring and fall are the best times for them and... Like I said, if I were doing it, I'd probably troll with a large stick bait going about. Eh. What's a stick bait? Uh, it's a wooden bait, or plastic now, mm -hmm. that has hooks on it. It'll have a lip on it. They'll have a small lip on the front. If it just dives a little bit, the bigger the lip, the deeper it dives. Yeah, it says plug, in other words. Yeah, it's plug. plug. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's local thing. I call Well, I call them stick baits. Some uh -huh. people call them plugs. Yeah. You know, there's... But basically, and another way to find out would be like, go down to the, lo your local bait shops are a great place. You want to learn about stuff, go down to like the Happy Hooker down here in, in uh, Asheville. They're, they have stuff at Hogan's Hut, but they have more expertise at the Happy Hooker. I mean, so you just go to, and uh, go, or you go to the Westfield play. Emporium down there, the Hunting and Fishing Emporium on Portage Street, uh -huh. and you ask them questions, and, and these guys will pretty much point you in the right direction. They're hip. And there's usually, always usually somebody there who's hanging around, you know, doing nothing other than, you know, it's a, you know, a cold, windy, wet day. It's a good day to go because there might be guys down there just catching up on the latest stuff. And you ask questions. You know, you want to go catch musky, I'd go down there. They'll show you what's working. You know, there might be somebody down there who say, okay, we'll try this, try that. You know, it's... it's well, in other words, uh, the musky uh, collar are real big fish. Uh, you're not allowed to keep one under 40 inches. They're not keepers. you got to throw them back. If they're under 40, that's over a yard. <laughs> and, they're, and they're a very, very, very strong fish. Uh, yeah, you got to skin them one, and you, you got to uh, marinate them for a long time, and then you fry them up, and they're delicious. But it takes a lot of work. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can go out... And you're probably going to have better, better productivity if you want fish to eat to go down there and, and catch perch, you know, off the docks there in Bemis or, or Long Point, you know. Or even, and they're a lot tastier fish. Well, yeah. you know what perch are. I've given well, you've you given some. me some. Yeah, I, so. The only trouble is you give me a bag this big and there's just me and my wife. 
and you you can't thaw it and refreeze it. You can't refreeze well, fish. It just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> so now you got to put them in little packages for me. Yeah, but I know you. You uh, you share with your family. I take them. Out. We have a fish fry for the whole we, family. We hear anyway. about that. Yeah. <laughs> And with your group, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, and he does a job, I'll tell you. Well, Carl, does that help you? Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. Thank you for your well, information. I, I will advise you, if you go fishing for muskie now, you, you most people do use live bait. You get a big uh, minnow or a, a, what they call a chub, or even a sucker if you're lucky, and you tie it onto the onto your line, and every muskie in the lake will come firing over to eat that thing, and, and then you got a muskie, okay? Okay. And then you got a battle. <laughs> Thank you, caller. Send me a stamped envelope. I got some $5 bills for the Lakeview for you. Uh, great restaurant. Yeah. They have a salad bar that never dies. Don Patooch, master fisherman, telling us a few of the inside secrets of fishing. And uh, I wanted to ask, you know, one of the, 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 the miniature cousin of the muskie is a very popular fish. There's a huge lure about it, a huge number of people that go after the Walleye Pike. Now, how do you get a walleye? A walleye, you walleye. A walleye is actually a member of the perch family. Okay. They're not really a pike. Is pike it, would be like northern pike, uh, musky, uh -huh. muscalunge, crossbreed. But the walleye is more related to the perch family, and that's... Just uh, an overgrown perch on, on, uh, they're on steroids. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a pretty good steroid job. Yeah, there. well, they, I've seen them. They're, they're, they can run 10, 12 pounds, some of these Oh, guys. yeah, we had one. It was. I can tell you a little story. Last Every year we fish this... Uh, Walleye tournament out of uh, Buffalo, a Southtown tournament. I've been in it now for like 14 years. This year we fished it. We caught fish, but you know, nothing to weigh. Day after, my buddy and I were going fishing, and the other guy we fished with, he had to go to work. So we were like, well, my buddy Randy says, well, I'm going to go out today and catch an 11 pounder. Guess what happened? Caught an 11 pound walleye. No kidding. Which would have probably paid anywhere from fifty to hundred bucks in the tournament. Yeah, you know, and you're like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, you but know, it was good eating too, though. I've so. got to tell you, my daughter is a wild fisherman. She, has, I mean, she really knows how to fish. She loves to fish. She went out doing a walleye tournament uh, with a bunch of, uh, of people in the tournament. She caught a monster. They entered hers and won the tournament, and they agreed to say it, to to cut her in on it. You know what she got out of it? Bupkas. Yep, that I means, know the story. That means beans. Bupkas. She won the tournament. No, no credit. No nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's some technicalities there I could get into that wouldn't be nice for the people who were fishing well, that tournament. Well, since this happened so. many, many years ago, I think the statute of limitations has run out. <laughs> well, technically, she shouldn't have been fishing on that boat because, according to the tournament she was in. Everybody on the boat has to be a member of the exactly. tournament. So, yeah, you know, so, so there's guys, regulations. These guys are pretty sneaky, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And you were talking about her fishing. I took her and our son fishing there the one day because they're uh -huh. married. And uh -huh. uh, she was going to kick yeah. Dave's butt, uh -huh. like her husband's butt, so to speak. And if you ever see Ruth, ask her who caught the bigger walleye that day. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there we go. Fishing stories are great. Yeah, well, how many did you get that day? Uh, geez, I can't remember. Well, you probably got a bundle because I, I know when you go out, you know how to catch. Well, how do you, you, you know, I see these giant boats at Barcelona, for particular. Yeah. They are parked one end to the other of the, of, the, of the harbor in the front and the back, all over that uh, beautiful pier down there, and up and down the road, uh, all of them with a trailer. And I see somebody unload these things. They're, they look like uh, giant ships almost. They have all electronic equipment, the depth finder, the, P, the, uh, the, uh, GPS. the uh, GPS satellites, uh, so they can go back to the same spot. They've got everything on these ships. It must cost about fifty thousand dollars or so. Well, you know, by the time they're all rigged. Electronics. You can go. Like I said, you can take a fish finder. You can get one for one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars, and learn to read it. And it, you know, the average guy, you're not out there only. You got three, three, maybe four months out of the year where you can get out on the lake. I mean, you can get out here a little bit more. <laughs> But basically, you know, if you get the basics, learn to read it, it'll help you a lot. It'll mark you fish. If you're looking for perch, you look for little discrepancies on the bottom. Uh, most of them will mark bait. You'll have like a little cloud will come on the screen. But uh, That means there's minnows or There's something? minnows uh -huh. or there could be shad or they could be smelt. They could be anything. Uh -huh. But like I said, it's learning that. And then a lot of the equipment, you know, you can go... Like if you're out on Lake Erie, I'd say if you're going to fish, one thing you should have is line counter reels. 
Is it what? Line counter reels. It tells you how much line you put out. And the reason for that is if you set one, say, if you're by yourself, you're allowed to use two rods. So you set mm -hmm. one out with the way you're fishing, say, 100 feet. Mm -hmm. The next one you set out at 75 feet. Well, you catch a fish on the 75 foot one. Well, you can run it right back to 75 foot again. You know because it says right there. You know how, how far, how far back you are. You can do the uh -huh. same thing on the other one. If you catch another one, you can say, well, wait a minute. These fish are at this depth. This is where I want to run. So if you're trolling, those are almost a necessity. Uh, now, you've got to have special rigs, too. And uh, they're and heavier poles uh -huh. for trolling. You, know, and there's, you can use dipsies or downriggers. There's so much stuff, it just, it just amazes you. you know, there's jet divers, there's uh, fish seekers. Whatever all these things mean, I don't know. They're I mean, all I, different I, pieces of equipment where I, if you I, go down to a tackle store, they'll say, well, we got this, 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 this. And it's all in how you want to fish. But if you find a way you like to fish, you know, that's the way to do it. And concentrate on that and try working it that way. And, well, hopefully you get into a niche and... A lot of it's a pattern. You know, you start, you catch your first, say, your walleye fishing out on the lake. You catch your first couple of walleye, say, at 40 foot of water. You stay in that 40 foot of water. If you have the line counter reels and say, for example, you're using dipsy divers and you're running them on, say, like a three setting at 100. What's a dipsy diver? It's a big disc. Uh -huh. And that disc has a weight on it that you can turn. <clears throat> It'll change the direction on how it goes, whether it goes to the left or the right, port or starboard, and then you change it a little differently and it'll drop down further or will plane out further. Uh -huh. It's it's kind of a nifty little thing. I don't know who, who thought of it. but it, So it makes the bait look more realistic? Are they no, realistic? what it does is it gets bait down and out and away from your boat oh, okay. because then you're going with less engine noise to distract them. I mean, like there's planer board mass where you have these... Uh, twin boards that are attached to a heavy line that's on a pole on your boat that you have a big heavy-duty reel on, and you can run those out. Then with rubber bands, and we use shower curtain uh, holders, mm -hmm. you run your line way out, and you can run it out like 100 feet off the side of the boat so you don't have any engine noise disturbing the fish. Yeah. And, but, you know, you can... Then again, you're looking at a lot of money. Yeah, know? look, I mean, for every fish they catch, to catch somebody told me it costs about $45,000. <laughs> they might be right. <laughs> they might be right. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, if, if you're doing it, you know, it took me, I've, every year I get a little bit more stuff. I mean, you always need, uh -huh. you, you don't need, but you always want to try something a little different, and you buy different plugs. You, well, like crawler harnesses, I tie my own. You know, you go get the parts, and you see this, or you see, but you see different blades. You know, they're no, colored it's blades. A harness. It's a, it's a line or wire. Uh -huh. They have a colored blade on them. It's uh, like a little plate with a hole in it, a little thin, thin plate. Well, mm -hmm. then it has two hooks on it. When you're trolling for walleye, you hook the crawlers on with the head towards the front. These are big the, worms, right? Yeah, right. Night crawlers are big worms, mm -hmm. and Basically, you troll them. You can bounce them off the bottom. You know, just go out with your boat, stop, and uh, ride the waves. And you get enough weight on so that you feel in the bottom and stay up off the bottom a little bit because otherwise the little gobies we talked about can terrorize you. Or you can run them like I do behind a dipsy, which gets them out to the side because I like to troll for walleye. I, just the way I've done my best in the last few years. But... Uh, it's just something different. You know, like I said, you got to go down to like a tackle shop. If you want a walleye fish in Lake Erie, go down here to like the Hunting and Fishing Emporium or the Barcelona Market. They've got stuff there. Or you can go down when the harbor's open and BS with Jock and the boys. They'll feed you a line there. And if you want to fish up here, I'd say the Happy Hooker. They just have you know, uh, local here. people. That, up uh, here is on Lake Chautauqua. Chautauqua yeah. Okay. Uh, more, somebody's trying to get in. But I'll tell you what, another thing don't, don't miss, and this is probably one of the easiest ways to go, is ice fishing for perch. And this last year, the ice fishing up here in Chautauqua for perch was just phenomenal. Now, everybody has, yeah, you have to have a shack. Oh, you don't have to. You know, it depends. I do because I'll go out, you know, 
a little bit more than other people probably. I think we have but, a phone call. Okay, we can try it. Do you have a caller? Hello. 